briefly about what we're trying to do. It's so important since the martial arts have such a terrible image in the movies, in the television, in the magazines, that we're really clear on what we're doing, especially with young people. Your children are here. I don't want to teach your children to be more violent. So basically what we're trying to do is deal with violence. It's the main issue with adults, with children. In Taki Name Do Karate, we teach our students how to defend themselves so they can have the confidence not to fight. Traditionally, we have been deeply conditioned to believe that an honorable solution to resolving conflict is through fighting, or we have been taught that fighting is morally wrong and that we must be nonviolent, that we must turn the other cheek. We have been caught in an either or fight or flight situation, either fight or run away. In Takename do Karate, we approach resolving conflict holistically through combining the skills of self-defense with the skills of resolving conflict non-violently. Learning a self-defense by itself is not enough, for it promotes only more fear. But combined with learning non-violent alternatives, the student has the skills to confidently cope with violence, both physically and mentally. I can't, what can? Somebody could grow up and be violent? Yeah. If they watch those cartoon shows yeah, and play those games? Like I, think yeah, I think so too. I think I agree with you. What? Because I think that they just have them on the TV, G.I. Joe, because they want kids to fight, maybe. Oh. I think so too. I think I agree with you. And maybe. And maybe another guess would be that they want kids to grow up being very violent. The most things are like missile launchers or guns or big bazookas or something like that. Missile launchers? Yeah. And bazookas? Yeah. And big guns. This is G.I. Joe? They have these guns and they have lasers and then all these tanks come in and then um, all these guns shoot in together. Do you think that could make somebody grow up and be violent if they... Yeah. 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 And what are they supposed to do in the game? Well, kill. Just have a big war. And kill each other? Yeah. yeah. Is that fun? No. You're a nice young little man, and I don't want to see you end up being hurt. resolve conflict non-violently, we need to teach people the skills to do so. In Takenami do Karate, we use role-playing techniques to teach our students what to do in potentially hostile situations. Together with the teachers, the students learn how to successfully cope with conflict. Taking turns being the bully and the victim, students learn how to deal with hostile aggression in non-violent ways. Some nonviolent alternatives they learn are how to make friends, how to use humor or trickery, how to reason your way out, or how to walk away with confidence. There are many ways students can learn to avoid confrontation. This is so simple and so necessary. Why aren't we teaching these skills to our children at school as an integral part of their overall education? Teaching young people how to cope with conflict nonviolently needs to be considered seriously so our children can live happy and healthy lives. Teaching young people how to resolve conflict non-violently will have a tremendous effect in their adult relationships, individually and globally. School, when you're home, what about things on television? Do you see anything that's violent? Well, sometimes they, they're not really fighting, they're just, they, they, there's no blood or anything, but they're always hitting them on the back. And also, like in those ninja movies, like, and those nin ninjas coming out, 
I mean, like hitting people on the back of the head and killing them and stuff. Well, I don't really like him because it's like the person gets killed and, may, and maybe other kids will just go crazy when they see that and suicide themselves. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really like that. He gets behind these army men and stabs them right through the head and then you see the knife come out the other side of their head with blood on it. And then sometimes, and, the, and this other guy, he, um, he gets stabbed um, through the head this way. And sometimes he, he shoots this M6 or M16 and you see blood everywhere sometimes. How does that make you feel? Uh, there is a much deeper significance to learning the art of karate than merely learning how to stop a fight from occurring. Fighting is only a symptom of a much deeper issue. In Takenami do Karate, we are interested in understanding the cause of conflict. In Takenami do Karate, we have the opportunity to explore our violence in a safe and controlled environment. Traditionally, we have been told that we must be nonviolent, which has created only more conflict, more violence. In order to understand conflict, we need to come into direct contact with it, to see what it is, what makes it up, what sustains it. If we can understand the nature and structure of conflict itself, in ourselves and in our immediate relationships, then we have the opportunity to understand conflict globally for it is one and the same. Conflict is conflict. Therefore, the art of karate can have a tremendous significance in understanding ourselves, in understanding the violence in the world. All the violence, the kicking and the mayhem that seems to go on, and most people have this image that karate is extraordinarily violent, but I think it's not. I think in Takenami Do Karate, that we're doing something different. We're trying to bring about an understanding of the violence really trying to comprehend what violence is and not to promote more violence. And this is the important thing of, of Takenami do Karate. I, I see the way of Takenami do Karate as a way of, is letting go of all of the thoughts that we really don't need uh, at the moment. Letting go of all the little cluttering thoughts that mess up our interactions from person to person and becoming empty like that bamboo and yet still strong on the outside, still able to move in the world with strength. It's kind of like your fears and your anger that builds up and comes up like that wave. And as it crashes, it like kind of subsides like the yielding of the bamboo and how it yields in the wind. So taking karate, in that sense, helps you with the, the aggression it, and the it violence It helps you to, to get all this out, all this in a safe environment. It helps you to uh, work out all your aggressions and your, and your inner tensions with the physical part of karate. So then it relaxes you to deal with everyday life. I mean the movements, the punching, the, the punching kicking? in the kitchen, the movements, yes. You and I are like, the, we are the world. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between this man and this man here. If we understand this, we've understood the whole. We've understood conflict globally. We've understood conflict. Mm -hmm. So there's a very important factor in what we do in Takenami do Karate. Understanding conflict, understanding how it comes into being, the nature and structure, so we can understand conflict. So when we leave here, we've understood that. And so the implications of Takenami Do is not just here in the dojo, but it's in our daily life, it's in the world. The Middle East, the conflict in the world, is the conflict that happens between all human beings. This is the same thing, one and the same. So if we understand this, we've understood. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. In karate, we sit quietly before we practice, and at the end of the practice. This is called makso. We do this so we can have a moment to allow ourselves to become relaxed, calm. Being relaxed, calm, we can concentrate fully on what we are doing, without distraction. But more importantly, sitting quietly, we have the opportunity to observe our thinking, to see the thoughts that are running constantly through the brain. Becoming aware of thought, we can begin to see the roots of self-centered activity, the fears that form our behavior, because thought affects behavior. Thought creates behavior. We begin to see how behavior is conditioned by thoughts of fear, mainly fear of self-survival. 
sitting quietly opens up the depths of ourselves. In this, the roots of violence are revealed. 